Anyways, um, what happened is I had to put my cat down on uh, Monday. She got really sick and she wasn't eating or drinking. So I took her down to the vets and we decided to cremate her. So I cremated her and um, yeah, she, had, she had a eye thing going on. It was a cataract in her eye, which she's a very old cat. She's she's about 17 years old, we figured. Um, we were guessing because I never knew when her birthday was because when me and the kids were living together uh, at my other place that I had, um, she kind of came down my tree, tree. She was on the roof and she came down the tree in the backyard and we were all outside on our back porch and she uh, decided to come and visit us. So she come down the tree and she walked around and at that time I had all kinds of dogs and cats and I didn't want, I didn't really, did I have another cat? Yeah, I think I did have another cat at that time. And, um, but she was um, a wild cat or something. So I told them I didn't want any more animals that not to feed her and not to give her any water and she'll go away. Oh, what did my kids do behind my back? They fed, my ca fed the cat. So she ended up sleeping on the back porch and I'd open up the back porch and there she was laying there sleeping on my porch. So she ended up staying with us and of course I fell in love with her and so did the kids and we had her for many many years. So I would say she was probably about six to eight weeks old then and uh, she always she always just stayed there. She was an outside cat. She'd come in you know and then she'd go outside for the day and come in at night and uh, eventually I ended up having to keep her inside completely because she kept getting urine infections and the vet told me that I needed to make her an inside cat. So I did. So, and that solved the problem. So she ended up being inside when I moved her. I moved her down here and she had already been an inside cat maybe for a year or two at the most and then I brought her down here. So I never let her outside here. She got outside a few times. She'd sit at the door if the door was open or something or the garage door was open. She'd sit out there with Shea Bear and for, for a few minutes and get that fresh air. But um, yeah, she never, never really attempted to go outside too much after that. So I had her for a long, long time and I've had her a long time by myself once the kids grew up, of course. They didn't take her, they didn't have a place where they could keep her, so, and I already attached to her, so she was staying with me regardless. So, um, but she had a cataract in her eye, that's what it looked like, and then it got very big, and so big it was bulging out of her, out of her eye, it was just bulging really bad. So it started to water really, really bad, and she she just couldn't take it. So my doc, a doctor that's for my mom came over, and she has cats, and she looked at it, and she felt it was uh, cancer. That's what she thought it was. But without a real test, nobody knows. Even the vet, Ty, took her to. She looked at it. She says it could be cancer, but they have to test it. And she she was too old and it was just gonna you know to put her through all that and for her to die you know it just would have been worse so we I decided to cremate her and they were really good um, you know they, they they let me stay there for a little while and and I held her and you know she she just she went with no pain she just got a shot and went to sleep and uh, so, um, yeah, I cremated her. So this is my Snickers. She's in, I got her a little cat thing to put her in. I thought that was cute. And so she's in there. And I got her Friday. And 
They told me it was going to take about a week, that's what they said. And I was like, okay, and they said you'd have to come and get her, and, and I was like, all right, you know, and I'm working. I work an hour away from my house, so it takes me an hour to get there and an hour back. So by the time anything's for me to get off, everything is closed, and they close at 5 o'clock. So they had called me on Friday and told me that Snickers had arrived. So um, I got a B right around my camera. And there, go away, because I'm highly allergic. Anyway, so um, so anyway, she called me and said I could come and get her, and I said, I said, uh, is there any way that you could mail her? You know, so I'd have her, you know, and I wouldn't have to miss work. So she said, sure, we can mail her. So they were gonna mail her, and and I probably would have got her on Monday. Well, then they called me back, and they said, well, we have a guy here that, that volunteers. I guess they have a volunteer who comes in every once in a while. And he said that he would deliver it to your house. So he brought it to my house. I thought that was so sweet. I wasn't even home. I was still at work. And I told him, well, my fiancé and my mom are there. So, yeah, so you can hand it to, the, to her, them. And, um, yeah, so... He, she got here yesterday. Isn't she cute? She's so cute. And she's all in here. And she's home. At least she's home now. So, I thought that was really nice of them. And, you know, the vet um, never had Snickers here. Because I never I never took her to the vets here. She was always inside. And I just left her alone. Um, she, we did have a vet up where my other home. Um, and she hadn't been there for a long time because she was a pretty healthy cat, you know, she was a happy, healthy cat. So, um, when I took her in and they had to put her down, the vet, th she cried, she, she even cried, so, um, I think I got a good vet for it, and this is Bruno's vet, so, um, yeah, I think that was very nice of them, and, you know, I also, from the, um, place that cremated her, they said, gave me a card, and I thought that was really nice. It's called Foster's Pet Cremation. It's in Spring Hill, Florida. That's where they she went. And they did a little write-up on there for her. If you want to freeze it and read it, that's up to you. I thought it was really sweet of them. And they gave her a little little bag. They had her in her bag. A little, little bag. And they delivered her with that. So that was really sweet of them. I thought it was very nice. Um, yeah, I was quite impressed that they, they decided to bring her, um, right to the house, so not too many veterinarians that I know that would do that, so anyways, I want to thank them all very much, and they were very nice to me the whole time I had to put her down, so, anyways, that was my story about Miss Snickers, now you won't because you guys have seen her in the videos walking by or she's sitting on the couch or something. So I thought maybe you might be interested in knowing what happened to her when you don't see her in the videos any longer. So Bruno is missing her very much. He, he gets a little depressed. And um, so we're trying to keep him up so he doesn't get too depressed. You know, he'll go up on the couch and he'll sniff and sit there all, half the day because he's waiting for her to come home. I got rid of the cat box, of course, because she, she was inside, so um, I got rid of it, and he'll go over there and sniff where the cat box was, just wondering why I'm, the box is gone, so he watched me take the box out, and he wasn't too happy about it, so. Anyway, so I told him that Snickers was in here, and I showed it to him, and she, he gave it a kiss, yeah. He gave, gave it a kiss, so I, hopefully he might understand. I don't know, but he he liked it. So <laughs> I put in Snickers beside my dad on the mantle so now they can keep each other company. So that's what happened to my Snickers. So anyways, that's it for now, and um, stay tuned. I have a product review I'm getting ready to do, and I'll put these up back-to-back, uh, -back, so... Stay tuned and watch that one too. Bye, y'all.
So she's out.